Hey right there people, it's Sunday afternoon, 1 p.m. in the afternoon. I'm just getting my ass out of bed. Well, I've been awake for a little bit. For sake, I'm just trying to get a bag of garbage out of the bedroom and close the door before the cat goes in there and starts fucking chewing on things that she shouldn't. Ah, I'm gonna try the bank once more again today. According to the website, the bank that I'm going to is the only one that's open from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Like I said, it's currently 1.30 or some shit. Just fired up the car because we've been having ice rain all night. Damn, this garbage bag is just... Fuck it, just... Just go there, Jesus. Fuck. Can't get the son of a bitch to stand up. But anyway, I didn't have a good sleep last night. Friggin... I don't know what the hell. I feel like I, drew, I was up all night drinking beers and... You know, I haven't even had any beers yet. And that's the way I'm gonna keep it for this weekend. I'm not gonna drink. But anyway, let's frig off and go to the bank. So... When I come back, I want to clean off my desks and clean off a bunch of shit and get shit organized. So I want to set up my Dell laptop and put Windows 7 onto it. So let's freaking get this over with. And welcome to my vlog. So Dad says that the banks aren't open today. It's just the bank machines. According to the website, I looked it up. The bank I'm going to is the only one that is open on Sundays. Like we have three other branches in town and uh, this is the only one that is actually open on Sundays. So the fact that they're open, or says they're open, means there should be people inside to take my money and put it into my bank account. Logically, that's what you would think. So I know banks run the same hours as us at work because we're all federal based. Well, we're provincial based, but whatever. But government based, they run the same holiday hours as us, so whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna get this money deposited. Then I may or may not head over to Future Shop and see about acquiring a webcam because uh, I really want that C270. It's a real good camera from what I've read on YouTubes and all that shit. Let's do this. Well, I made it. I dropped off the money. Life is good. Mom tried to tell me yesterday that the only part of the bank that's open is the bank machines. Nope, they had four tellers working in there. Yep, banks are open on Sunday. Right on. Well, let's go over to Future Shop and get a webcam. Yay, we managed to get the cameras. That's right, too. Yeah, buddy. Oh, I'm just coming through the drive through to get myself a coffee. My fucking in front of me totally ordering a sandwich. Friggin', this is why they need to make drive through for Horton's strictly coffee and donuts and no preparables. Because now I'm going to be waiting for like three minutes while this sandwich gets made. Fuck sakes. This is why I hate coming through the drive through sometimes. I need a coffee big times though. So let's get that and then we'll friggin' head out and go to home. Yeah, buddy. Alrighty, well, I'm back home. Dad's on his way over to uh, take a looky-see and find out exactly how he's going to plan his attack for uh, friggin' the drain for the sink in the kitchen. So, oh, that'll be alright. And then after that, I'm going to work on getting my desk cleaned up, get my laptop set up up here, and get Windows 7 installed on my laptop because this Windows 8 ain't so great. And 8.1 wrecks everything. I uh, VLC won't load. I can't use Handbrake anymore. Handbrake is a great program for converting files that your video editor can't read into a format they can read, you know, or for compressing the fuck out of a final project into something for YouTube. I can't run Handbrake on my computer either because it, it crashes on load. And then that's happened ever since 8.1 went on board. So I gotta get rid of 8.1, go back to 7, and maybe that laptop won't completely lick my balls anymore. But we'll find out. Anyway, waiting on Dad. Well, Dad now sees what kind of a project we're up against. He just popped over there, and I didn't bother filming. But uh, he realizes that uh, he's going to have to come up with a new plan of attack. Because shit is weirdly placed down there, that's for sure. Oh, well. He'll figure it out while he figures it out. I'm watching some nerd cube play some... Uh, well, I think he's going to die. But uh, watching him play uh, friggin' uh, FTL. Friggin' love this game. So tomorrow I plan on call... Uh, it's going to be kind of rough getting the car in, but... Uh, I'm going to try and schedule the car for an exhaust job. Um, i seen the leak. I got underneath the car with the camera because it was easier that way. <laughs> and um, yeah, the whole side of the intermediate pipe. It's weird the way the exhaust on the G6 runs. I wonder if I can find a picture of it. One second. Okay, unfortunately this is the only picture I can find. It's really small. But uh, okay, so there's my muffler. This is behind the car. There's my chrome tip, and it comes the road loops around, and you see this segment right here, this this flat spot, and then it kind of bends and then bends, and then it goes into, and then it goes into like a flex hose, which uh, hooks up into the uh, the Y pipe. Anyway, this segment right here, this flat spot between the bends, like the like the uh, the back of the C, 
there's a great big gaping hole just after the elbow and that's where she's pissing out a lot of exhaust so I don't know if he's got to replace this whole segment of pipe or if he can just like cut it and slap a new pipe in or what but we're gonna have to get that patched up or replaced or something so I'm gonna call tomorrow and see if we can get that done um, also because of all that overtime I'm working I'm uh, thinking seeing how that back passenger rim has a uh, it's warped I don't know if having a warped rim will cause an, uh, cause the tires to leak the way they do I, I could see it because if the rims not round the tire won't seat properly right and it could cause some problems so I don't know I don't know enough about this shit but I was thinking about saying frigate and just buying well I want to see if 16 inch tires can go on that car so if I can downgrade to 16 inch tires, then I might buy four steel 16 inch rims and some all weather tires and slap them on there. And then I won't have to worry about pumping up the tire at least twice a month or whatever. So that'd be new tires, new exhaust. Uh, what else needs to be done to the car? Once the tires and exhaust are done, everything else is basically up to par. I already did the air filter, I already did the suspension, brakes are done, uh, windshield needs replacing. But I'm not going to do that in the winter. I'll wait till the summer for that. Apple Auto Glass, they quoted me like $178 cash, $250 debit. If I do a cash, it's like they pocket the cash, right? Probably. I don't know. But um, they quoted me around $180 bucks for a new windshield for that car because it's such a common windshield. Apparently, that windshield on the G6, I, I didn't understand this, but it's the same windshield that's on the Malibu, the Impala and the uh, well the old Grand Prix so apparently the windshield is the exact same in all of them I didn't realize GM was like that hardcore and making the exact same windscreen but it's pretty awesome so frigate you know uh, 180 bucks slap a new window onto her and then um, I guess they just take my old rearview mirror off and just hot glue it back onto the new windshield or some shit whatever they do they can do it I'll just throw money in their face and they can get it done but the big, the big ticket item is probably going to be the steel rims and the 16 inch tires. And the reason why I'm downgrading from 17s to 16s is because number one, 16s are cheaper. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Break back. Dad's trying to set up iCloud on his computer. I don't know why, but uh, I don't see him taking many pictures with his iPad. I told him how I have my iPad set up so that when I take pictures, it uploads them to my iCloud on my computer so I don't have to like hook my iPad up to my computer and download them off the photos and now he wants to do that too. I can see it benefiting mom more because mom plans on using the camera on her iPad because she doesn't really have a smartphone with a camera or a digital camera really I don't think. She might have one. I, I don't think she does though. But mom that's what she was really excited about was this summer when they go to the camp she can take her iPad and take pictures of things happening and stuff because she likes the fact that the iPad has a 9.7 inch viewfinder. But anyway back on the topic of the, uh, the car. I just found this broken down version of the exhaust. Uh, looks like that intermediate pipe is in fact a full segment. So I'm going to call the exhaust shop tomorrow. Chances are he won't have it in stock and he'll have to order something for it. And then uh, go from there. I wonder if while he's ordering if he can order this muffler but with the two outlets so it looks like dual. Maybe, maybe it'll sound different and be pretty pimp. I don't know. I don't know. But um... Yeah, that's what I'm going to do is uh, first get the exhaust fixed because that's just bloody annoying, especially when you're videotaping. And all you can hear is the fucking exhaust in the background drowning me out. Like, that's just horrible. So we'll get that all patched up. I don't know if that'll fix my fuel economy. Probably will. If anything, it'll give me more torque because let me tell you, right now the car is like, I don't know, it just it feels weird when you're driving it. Like, you get on the gas and it just, it's like it has, it has no get up and go. So probably due to the exhaust, most likely, having no back pressure. But uh, we'll get that all thatched up and patched up and repaired, and then um, I'll have to uh, call around to some tire shops and see who has the best deal on steelies and uh, some all-terrain tires. Not all-terrain, all-weather. All-terrain, what am I driving, a freaking truck? Ha! <laughs> but uh, some all-weather tires and slap them on there. And Because uh, basically, come March, April, I would love to make another trip down to Blokes and go visit them, because frig, I have a blast when I go visit Bloke. Like, we just party and we chat and we hang out and who cares if we don't make YouTube videos, it's, you know, it's, he's an awesome guy to hang out with. Like, the best, the only reason why I'm happy I ever went to David's farm is because I met, I met Crazy British Bloke and that guy's fucking amazing. That's the only good thing that came out of the farm. So, it was the fact that I met Bloke. And, um, 
yeah, and I want to go down and visit them again. You know, next year I'd like to go down a couple times, even if it's just leave on a Saturday and come back on a Sunday type deal, or book a Monday off and come back on a Monday type deal for a couple days, just go down and hang out. It doesn't matter, you know, or if it's a long weekend, like a Friday, like a Friday off or Monday off or something, go down for a Monday and book the Friday off, go down for a weekend and just hang out, because I have a riot when I'm down there. It's, it's a blast, but... I really do not want to take that G6 on a long road trip in the condition it's in. But while I was at Craig's last night, uh, we were talking about how I wanted a truck or a minivan to haul that down, and he's like, why don't you just put a trailer on your car? And a lot of you have said, why don't you put a trailer on your car? The problem is, is parking at Blokes, because that's where I stay when I go down, it's always at Blokes. Um, the visitor's parking, there's nowhere to put a car in a trailer. So I would have nowhere to park my car. Well, I could park my car, but I couldn't park the trailer. Um, so I'd have to park across the street at the grocery store where I couldn't keep an eye on my shit and people would go over there and they could quite possibly dick with the tractor or steal it or steal my truck, like, you know, whatever. So that's where, like, if I had a minivan or a truck, I could just leave it in the box of the truck or leave it in the back of the minivan. Obviously no gas in the, the tank, it'd be drained right out so the car doesn't fill with fumes or the van, whatever, and then uh, when it's time to go out to Pugs, just, you know, jump in the van and fucking go out to Pugs, you know, or or take the, the trapped out of the van, throw it in the back of Bloke's truck and go out to Pugs, whatever it is. Uh, so that's why I was thinking, like, something with its own cargo carrying capability. And I was looking at pickup trucks, and I was looking at vans, and the only reason why I would prefer a van over a pickup truck is the fuel economy, but honestly the pickup truck would be nice too because if I was driving and there's been times let me tell you and driving around the street and like somebody has like like a perfect freaking table set at the end of the road for free you know they're throwing it in the garbage or a perfect freaking uh, lawnmower at the end of the road uh, just a push mower because they bought a self-propelled and they don't want to bother with Kijiji you know just grab that and throw it in the back of the truck bring it home Test it out, see if it works. Put it up on Kijiji for like 15, 20 bucks. Dump it and make some money, you know? Uh, like, Or even, I wouldn't want to do what Marcel does, like the whole scrapping fridges and stuff, because, well, here in North Bay, you can't bring a fridge to the, uh, the scrapyards. Like, I don't understand. I guess in the scrapyards in Sudbury, they deal with the Freon on their own. But here in North Bay, you, when you have a fridge, you have to bring it to the dump and you have to pay them extra for free on disposal and all that shit, I believe. But all I know is at the dump, they have rows and rows and rows of old fridges. So I couldn't do fridges, but like stoves and washers and dryers, those are fine. You can bring those to the scrapyard and get a, you know, get a nice red penny. And, uh, oh, no, sorry, sorry, we're in Canada. Get a nice shiny nickel. The penny's been outlawed. But, um, yeah, like, you know, we can do that with a truck and you know some people are like well would you want to do that with a new truck like you might scratch it up and stuff well honestly a truck is meant to be a workhorse they're not meant to look pretty all their life um, so if it gets scratches and stuff it just adds character and most of these new trucks you get now I haven't seen a new truck yet with a bare box like huh, that sounded dirty but uh, like you buy a new Ford F-150 and it comes with a plastic box liner all the time, which, you know, that's pretty cool. You buy a new Chevy, it comes with a... Except for, no, you know what? That's right. When Where's Bobby bought his truck? It was just a steel box line. It didn't have a box liner. It was just a steel bed. And he bought that uh, that spray-on Rhino liner stuff, and he did it himself. I forgot about that. So, yeah, it might not come with a box liner. But, you know, you can get box liners for fucking cheap. You can buy the spray-on stuff, the roll-on stuff. The bring it to, uh, I can bring it over to Crown and have them put it on. You know, they got this shit they spray on, like the box liner Rhino. And they could do all that for me. And that stuff's pretty good. So I wouldn't be too worried about scratching up the inside of the box. Not a big deal. Only problem with that Rhino liner is water can't get out of the box. It literally turns the box of your truck into a swimming pool. Which could be pretty cool in the summer. Fill up the box with water, sit back there, drink beers, maybe even park the truck in the backyard, you know, have like a little freaking backyard swimming pool. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. I'll get back to you on that one. Like last night we were talking, uh, I was over at my buddy Craig's house there, we were playing video games, and I mentioned that uh, I was thinking about trading in the G6 and either A, getting a truck, or B, getting a Dodge Caravan because we've tested it and it works. The Dynamark fits in the back of the Dodge Caravan when all the back seats are in stow-and-go mode. Yeah, it fits back there. I was like, well, for fuck's sakes, like, the minivans, like, uh, Adrian's Caravan doesn't get, well, it gets way worse gas mileage than, well, 
No, I guess about the same as the G6 right now. Never mind. Um, on the highway, though, those vans, they fucking sip fumes all day. Like, they're mint. So I was like, you know, sure, I'm not a soccer mom or anything, but you can haul a lot of cargo in a minivan and um, bring my tractor down. And whenever I get cranking on that white and get that thing up and running, I just need a belt for it. And the um, problem is I can't find the old belt, so I'm not sure what size I need. I guess I could... Could I just run a rope? What if I could do that? Just run a rope around the pulleys to get my my idea, and bring the rope in the crappy tire, put it up to the sizing machine, and then buy a, a belt based on that, and maybe buy one smaller just in case, and then bring back the one I don't use. I could probably do that, maybe. I know a rope is not the same thickness and all that as a uh, as a belt, but I don't know when you measure a belt, or you measure. I guess you're measuring the inner diameter, not the outer diameter. But um, yeah, I need to get a belt for it. And then uh, we'll be good to go because the carb's all cleaned, the stator's back installed. I just need to pop the flywheel back on and bolt her down and then uh, <coughs> test the fuel system, see if she leaks like a whore, and uh, fire it up. Oh, I want to change the oil too because uh, the oil in that tractor is uh, its pretty, well, it has no, no oily consistency. It's like black water. So I'm probably going to drop the oil and put some new 5-dub-30 in there and... I got a couple bottles in the garage, not a big deal. And then uh, kick her over, see if she'll fire and run. I question the muffler on it. It's kind of rotten, but what's a new muffler for those? Like 10 bucks? Briggs 8.5, probably around 10 bucks. I think they even sell them over at Crappy Tires, so just grab a new muffler, bolt that on, and be ready to rock. But um, yeah, because I'd like to build it up, but I want to do what Rex did where he made his faster tire. I have no idea what the, how fast that thing's going to be. If it's like the Dynamark, then it's going to be like a turtle on a crutch. And I'd like to get it up to a pretty decent speed, because I'd like to bring that tractor to Pugs and race it on the Inwood 710. Would I take them? Probably not. But it would just be fun to drive a tractor on that on that track to say, you know, I did it. That'd be awesome. But yeah, that's why I was thinking about getting a new vehicle, and that's why I don't want to dump too much into this thing. But then again, you know, I'm not making payments on it anymore, because it's paid for. So that's extra money I can put towards other things, right? So, yeah, it's one of those, do I want to go back into the world of car payments? Now, of course, there's always the option of save up like $5,000 or something and go on Kijiji or just shop around at all the used lots in town and look for a, an old 2000 or a 98 pickup truck. Uh, something that's going to be mechanically reliable to make the run to blokes. Also something that I won't have to put full coverage insurance on, which that's a pain in the ass when you buy a brand new vehicle and you're pay making payments. That thing has to be bumper to bumper insured, freaking collision, fire, theft, you name it, it has to have it. Like full coverage, none of this personal liability, pro uh, property damage li uh, insurance only. You gotta have this thing rigged right with the, with the max insurance, which increases your monthly payments. So, like right now the G6, because when Pontiac folded, that car depreciated like so bad that it's, if I were to sell it tomorrow, if I got two grand for it, I ripped someone off type thing, you know? Well, in the state it's in now, yes. If it was even 100%, that car is only worth like maybe seventeen fifty. Like they're not worth much anymore. Their, their value is shit. So the moment Pontiac folded, they died. And then all the classics, like the, the Trans Ams from the day, they skyrocketed. Like my, my Trans Am out there, if I got it appraised, they probably wouldn't give me 7500 uh, 7, for it. They'd probably up it just because it's classic Trans Am still running all original bullshit in it, right? So it's all original. There's nothing aftermarket in there well, except for the stereo. But I got the stock stereo in the garage if they really want it. It doesn't work with a shit. But if they want it, they can have it. So that's why I'm like tossing and turning. And a lot of you are probably thinking, why, well, you just want to buy a truck so you can bring a tractor down to Pugs? That's pretty pathetic. Well, it's not just that. It's uh, if I want to bring my, my tractor to, like, let's say Rex and I want to go off-roading again, but we don't, don't want to go down the trails over by the house, like where we went last time. We want to go somewhere else. Well, I can just load my tractor into the back of my truck, and we can go somewhere else. We can take it up the hill and go to uh, the trails we went on with Big Red and that. You know, we can, we can frig off and go out to Redbridge and ride the trails out there, or, you know, we can do whatever the hell we want. And, like, Rex has a truck, but... Once he has his his uh, tractor in there, there's no room for another tractor, let's face it. Unless we do some serious tetrising and have a tractor just hanging out the box on the sides and stuff, you can't fit two tractors in the back of a six and a half foot box. So that's why that and I just, I really, really, really honestly do miss my old Sierra. 
Like anybody out there who watches Rex, you guys may remember his old truck that he called Smokey. That blue 80, I think it was an 89, could have been an 88, um, it could have been a 90 for all I know. But he had the 4.3 liter V6. But his truck, my truck was the black, it was the exact same thing but black. Uh, and I had a 350 under the hood that we put in afterwards because the 305 that was in it had uh, uh, had a nice problem where it liked to burn every single fluid except for gas. Well, it burned fuel, but it burned every other fluid faster. It was one of those, you go to the gas station, you're like, yeah, tub up the oil and check the fuel. Because literally it burned oil, it burned coolant. It was just fucked. Um, it needed like a lot of rebuild work done. And my buddy Chuck knew a guy who had a 350 sitting in a barn that he pulled out of something. I think he pulled it out of his race truck. So he had no use for it. It was sitting in the barn. He was just going to keep it around in case he needed a, in case he found a shell someday. But it was like five years and he never used it. So Chuck said, well, what do you want for it? And Buddy's like, ah, just come and take it. So Chuck went and got it and threw it in my truck. And uh, I ran that 350 for a good year until uh, I was heckled enough to sell the truck. I don't want to get into that. But uh, I missed that truck because honestly... It was an 89 Sierra, two-wheel drive, like it just had rear-wheel drive. Uh, I lowered it 4'6", so I did a, a four-inch drop in the front, six in the rear. So it sat, it, well, it sat lower, six inches, four inches isn't that much, it's only like a half a foot. But it looked freaking badass. And, and like those old trucks, when they, they sat like this, like they sat on a major angle. The front end was pushed down, the ass end was up in the air. When the suspension kit was installed by Canuck Motorsports, well, I bought the suspension kit from them. I had it done at the alignment center in town. Uh, the truck sat perfectly level, like it was completely level. It looked mint, and it sat lower than any other S10 or S10, any other Sierra on the road. And I just loved the truck. Like, and on top of that, I didn't care if it got dinged up. Like, there's times at Walmart where I parked beside somebody and they just fucking plowed their door into mine. And, you know, put a little dent in there, but I was like, whatever, I just pop it back out, and I didn't care if the thing looked like a crumpled beer can. I used to smash shopping carts with it if they were in my way, because I didn't give a fuck of that, and it had this massive metal bumper on the front that, good luck damaging that thing. Yeah, like, it was a great truck. I used to love doing burnouts in it and just driving the ball bag off of it, and it was, it was fun. But I really miss it, and ever since then, I've been, like, truck crazy. I really, really, really wanted a truck, and just never got around to getting one again. So that's my real reason for wanting a truck. But, once again, do I want to get back into car payment? That's my big uh, dilemma. But, ah oh well. I just figured I would cover the whole car topic, so I'm going to probably call them tomorrow, because they're closed today. I already tried. They're closed on Saturday and Sundays. I'm going to call him tomorrow and see if he's got to order parts for the uh, for that pipe. Uh, he may want to look at the car first to see what it's going to take, and then go from there. So, if he wants to do that, then we'll have to go in tomorrow, have him take a peek at it, and at least get the exhaust fixed for now. And then when I get my overtime pay, which is going to be not this coming Wednesday, but two Wednesdays from now, then uh, I'm going to call around to the local tire shops and see who has the best deal on steelies and, uh, and such. And see if we can try and size the 16s and see if they'll fit over those massive brake calibers. Because apparently the GT doesn't use the same brakes as the G6, or the V6, sorry. That's what they were saying on the forums. The GTs have some specialized braking, and that's why they have 17-inch rims. But the cleaner dick at work, he has a G6 GT, and he has more sidewall showing than I do. And I'm, I, I couldn't take a look at the size of his tires because um, they're pretty salt covered. And I tried to, I was looking all over the tire, and then he got nervous. He's like, "Hey, what are you doing near my car?" And I'm like, "Oh, I'm just trying to check out your tires." He's like, "Get away from my car!" And I'm like, "Ah, oh, for frig's sakes, okay." But I'm pretty sure he was rocking 16s on a GT, so. If I can rock 16s on a GT, then I'm doing that because that's I'd rather deal with that. The tires are cheaper, and that's another thing that doesn't get me at all. It's like the more rubber they use to make a tire, the cheaper they are. You ever notice that? You get low-profile tires where like the sidewall of the tire is thinner than the freaking sole of your shoe, and they're like 250 bucks a tire, yet you go out and get a 15-inch tire where the sidewall is bigger than the friggin surface area of the tire and the tire is like ninety seven dollars so the more material they use the cheaper the tire it makes no sense to me how that even like it doesn't make sense i don't understand the logic behind it unless to make a low profile tire it's a completely different method to pull that off so 
I don't know. I don't know. One thing I do know is I need to set up some webcams and uh, I want to do an unboxing video and a video test video for um, Northern Tech and stuff like that. And I really need to rock a piss because this XL Horton is totally going through me like a son bitch. Be right back. Uh, just working on cleaning off my desk when I found this. I've been looking for this for a while for coil building. Probably saying, what the frig do you want a Zippo for for coil building? Well, it was a Zippo, but I took the thing out and I put one of these into it. And I'm guessing it needs gas. Oh no, it, it fires. But it needs some, some fuel, some, uh, uh, what do you call that shit? I can't remember. But uh, lighter fluid there, the... Um, the spray stuff I, you know what I mean anyway it needs some of that but basically when you're making a coil for your EVODs or your pro tanks it's always recommended to torch your wire before you wrap it just to get all the they got like a, a light insulation onto it so some people won't even bother they'll just hook the coil up do an ohm test and then they'll fire the coil right on a mod and then burn off all the wick and then or not the wick but burn off all the residue right while it's in the mod, but a lot of people find it easier if you pre-torch your wire, then wrap it. Apparently it's more pliable and it doesn't spring back and stuff when you pre-torch it. I've been looking for this friggin' thing, mainly for this insert, so I could use it as a torch to torch and I finally found it. So, that's friggin' awesome. Hell yeah, that is Jack Dagnalls. Jack Dagnalls, old number seven brand from Tennessee Whiskey. Well, here goes nothing. Got the laptop. Gonna go for a Windows 7 install and uh, see if this goes through. I'm also watching Season 8 of Dexter. Frig yeah. Haven't seen it yet. Figured I'd better catch up. And it'll be friggin' awesome. So, and I got my driver support page open here so I can get all my drivers once this pig's installed. Look at the flicker on that screen. Holy shit. Oh, frig yeah. Here we go. Let's see if this actually takes and works or if it bakes and I do recovery. Luckily, if I need to, this laptop won't be a complete lemon if friggin' things screw up because on this pen drive I have the Windows 8 recovery for it so I can just stab it back into recovery and bring the friggin' machine back to factory. Hopefully that works, but if not, well, fuck it. Worst case scenario, I'll throw Ubuntu onto it. Bring it. So far, so good. Let me tell you, this is a pain in the ass to install. Big times. It's not like old laptops where you just like, you know, fucking plug it in and, and you're done. This one here is really whack. First you gotta go into the BIOS and set everything to legacy mode, otherwise it will not install off the CD because the OS is not Windows 8. Then you need to go to Dell and download their drivers. Oh, welcome to White Balance. Then you gotta go download their drivers to allow it to see the hard drive. Yeah, because it's set up with an MSATA RAID controller. And uh, so you have your SATA drive, which is the one terabyte. And you have a 32 gig MSATA that it uses for, uh, for Intel rapid storage, whatever. Basically makes the computer run faster. So you have to basically disable all that shit at first. But you need to run the driver on the install to see the hard drives. Then you got to delete all the old partitions because they're set up in a GPT table and you need to make it an MBR, which I'm probably talking and you're all probably, the techies out there understand, but anybody who doesn't is probably just fucking clueless right now, but that's fine. I'm just telling you, like, it's not as easy as, you know, it was with, like, the Acer I have downstairs or the other Acer I have downstairs or, or this Dell XPS 9000 or the 8300 in the other room. It's a real whore to do, um, and I'm hoping it takes, and I'm hoping when I install my video drivers from Dell.ca that I'll have access to my AMD card again, and I'll have access to all the other shit, and I'll be able to run stuff like, oh, I don't know, uh, uh, friggin' MPEG stream clip or uh, Handbrake without running into problems. And the best part about this whole ordeal is, now when I click on start, I can go to programs and I can look at all my programs I have installed. Because let me tell you before, having to go through the tiles and then clicking on the show all pro- Oh my god, was that ever a pain in the cock. Like you want to do, like, like if a program installed and didn't put a, a desktop shortcut, you had to go back into live tile mode, right click on it, go to show all programs, hunt through the millions and millions of executables that are in there, find the program you want when it ran, Hopefully you remembered at that point in time to pin it to your, your taskbar or to create a shortcut on your desktop. Because if you didn't, you got to do that again next time. And, oh man, like Windows 8 is great for a tablet, not for a PC. I'm hoping the next time Microsoft does a revision, like Windows 9, or if they call it some other name, like Windows Not Vista, or 
you know, if they come up with a different name for it, I hope they learn from their mistake and get rid of this live tile shit because it's shit. It's, it's, it's junk. So many people I know who got Windows 8 computers contacted me and said they downgraded the Windows 7. Like, Microsoft's probably seeing threads everywhere about this. Hopefully they go, maybe Windows 8 wasn't so great. Maybe we should, like, go back to our, our roots and make a Windows that's more like Windows, not like iOS on iPad because that's just lame and things, but whatever. Anyway, let's see if this thing will boot. And this looks very promising despite the fact that the font is massive. Obviously Windows 7 has no idea what kind of video card I have. Okay, focus there buddy. It's having a problem distinguishing between the flickers, but it booted. We're in Windows 7 on the Inspiron 17, uh, 7520, so that's a bonus. Now I just need to go on this computer where I'm watching Gaming Lemon play uh, Far Cry 3, download all my drivers off of Dell, fire them onto this USB drive, and then stab them on this thing, and maybe, just maybe, uh, things might be pretty friggin' awesome. Or it might cock up and not work at all. But here goes nothing. Well, that's gonna take a while. I'm downloading the drivers right now, so we got the uh, USB 3 controller, uh, chipset driver, and the video driver, which I'm not sure if this is for both the ATI card and the Intel card or what, but the package is freaking huge, so... And my internet's running like a turtle on a crutch right now, so... It's been going for about 15 minutes, got 12% in. Yeah, it's gonna take a while, so... I'm thinking about taking a run to the grocery store and looking for food. Because, well, I got food here that I can cook. I can make a chicken pot pie or cook a ham or something, but... I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm going to pick up something to eat. Yeah, forget. Let's go to the grocery store. Actually, on second thought, I got some food downstairs in the freezer that I really should cook before it gets freezer burnt and I have to toss it. Uh, one of them is those uh, butter battered chicken freaking... It's basically chicken with cheese embedded between two slabs of chicken. Um, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. You cook them in the, uh, the old convectional here. And uh, I figure while I'm cooking what I can do it's pretty cold down here, but my sink is not frozen. So what I want to do is get all these dishes done and put away before she freezes over again. And that way there, I can have all my dishes done. And then tomorrow or Tuesday or whatever, or even maybe later on tonight, I'll take a trip over to Walmart and pick up some paper plates and some knives and forks and things like that. And then uh, until summer hits or we get the plumbing fixed, which everyone comes first, I'll use paper plates and plastic forks and shit like that just to, uh, you know, avoid uh, having to do dishes because my sinks being a dink so a lot of you sent me a lot of links to like things like um, the wire that you plug in wrap around the pipe problem is is in order to wrap around the pipe we got to tear up this floor like big times I have no spare boards so unless I want to redo my floor again that's not an option but dad's thinking about it right now thinking of an idea and maybe we'll get something that'll work and uh, it'll be awesome so, yeah, freak sakes, freak sakes, the joys of owning an old house, eh? Big times. Old house that was built by a bunch of rednecks. Well, this, this section here is built by a bunch of rednecks who had no idea what the freak they were doing. Because, like I said, when I originally moved into the house, these taps and the drain both ran outside the wall. So, not exactly a smart design, I do say so. But, Dad has some ideas, I have some ideas, and, uh... I might go ahead with my idea if his if he doesn't come up with an idea and it'll be pretty dicked. But anyway, let's get uh, some, some freaking food cooking here. I'm going to make some rice and chicken because I love that kind. And maybe boil up some vegetables on the stove while I'm at it. So we'll have rice, veggies, and chicken for supper. Should be pretty friggin' epic. I do say so myself. Oh, also my clothes are probably done drying. I want to put them in for another, another little bit. And then let's get dinner going. Talk about timing. Just finished getting my dishes done. My dinner's cooked. Friggin' just letting this shit drip dry. I'll deal with it after. I'm hungry right now. So my dinner's cooked. Rice is cooked. I'm gonna make a plate and go eat. Friggin'. Okay, well, dinner's done. Everything's washed up and put away. And I'm just installing more drivers on this thing. The USB 3.0 drivers. Still haven't gotten the video chipset driver. It failed to download something about the internet shit to bed or some friggin' thing. So I'm gonna have to redo that one and go from there. So not a big deal, not a big deal. And we are done installing Windows on this computer. It's got Windows 7. I just need to install my new copy of Sony Vegas 12 onto it. And Magic's Movie Edit Pro. And Google Drive. And a bunch of other things. 
But once all those are installed, this rig will be ready to rock. And the best part is the graphics has the switchable graphics again, which means I can play video games on this too if I wanted to. And I can use the AMD card to help render faster and things, which is freaking awesome. So, yeah, um, I don't think that's a hardware control. No, it's, no, it is. Is it? Oh, no. You're probably wondering what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about, how the keys glow. Uh, it's all controlled by uh, the actual system. I was worried about that, that it wouldn't work, but uh, I'm glad that's working. That's just built into the system. has nothing to do with the windows or anything. Perfect. So, we're good to go. Frig yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and install this shit and get it all set up, and then I'll bring it back to work tomorrow, and I'll have a good working computer at work again, right on. I'm sure it's not Windows 8, but uh, that's probably better. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video people, I'm shutting her down here, it's gonna be a bitch rendering this and editing it all up. I didn't realize how much footage I had until I friggin looked at all the footage and went holy shit. So a little bit of a longer video, but it is what it is. So hopefully you enjoyed it, click that like button, share this shit, and until next time, keep on vlogging.